Hello again. I'm Wally Wood. Thank you for joining us. This is the Revelation File. In our last time with you, we were addressing the fears and the panic across the country having to do with predictions that uh, America is going to be under great attack in November. And we featured the response of our friend Mario Morello to those uh, situations in which people are anxious about what's been prophesied. And there's a lot of traffic on this topic right now uh, across the, the Internet. People sharing this, that, that particular prophecy uh, of Pastor Dana, who originally posted this prophecy, has gotten over 2 million views in just about a month or less. So we were addressing a balance, if you will. We're not reputing anything that uh, the pastor posted. Um, there are a lot of people who are doing that. But our position, Mario's and my position, and the position of this particular program has been to inform and educate and to help you as a believer better understand the times that we're in so that you may walk more stable through the times that have already been prophesied in Scripture. So we're not positioning ourselves to uh, challenge anybody on anything in this particular manner. That's between them and the Lord. And the, Lord. the Scriptures declare that we're to walk in wisdom. Even in Revelation 13 where it talks about the mark of the beast and the number of his name, there is the parentheses added, here is wisdom. We're to walk in wisdom, the knowledge of his word and knowing how to administer his word, both to ourselves and to others, seeking balance. Without me, you can do nothing, Jesus said. And so we encourage our listeners to do as we're doing, and that is to pray without ceasing, to seek his face, even in our busy schedules. So I want to play on that or uh, go forward in that particular theme having to do with preparations for his return. A question came to our ministry a few days ago from a person asking what are the three best ways in which the church can prepare itself for the return of Christ. And I want to address that. I'm not necessarily talking about the three best ways, but three ways in particular that we can prepare ourselves without having to go uh, to the extremes of investments in gold and silver and land and things of this nature. These things are the earth. Jesus said in Luke 21, you've heard me say this before, pray always that you may be found worthy to escape the things that are coming upon the earth. And that's where our focus is. Peter, uh, uh, the Apostle Peter, in his epistle of 2 Peter 3, verses 10 and 18, made the comment, he says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that, uh, that are in it will be, all be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in holy conduct and godliness? Verse 14, Therefore, beloved, looking for, uh, for, forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace. I'll say that again. Looking forward into these things that have been prophesied, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blameless. Verse 17, You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also uh, fail from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, which is fear and anxiety, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are to grow in Him and in our confidence in Him, our dependence upon Him. Therein lies our steadfastness. 
in 1 John 3, 3, we know that when Christ appears, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Knowing that these things are coming, knowing that we are in those days, and I'm not saying that Jesus' is coming is imminent. <clears throat> I'm saying it is soon. There's still a timetable yet to be played out prophetically. But knowing that we are in that generation, and he said that the generation that saw the things that he and the prophets had prophesied for the end times would not pass away until everything had been fulfilled. So knowing these things, we are to purify ourselves. And in that purification, we become more like him in every way. 1 Corinthians 7.15 God has called you to live in peace. That says a lot. That is an absolute alternative lifestyle, contradictory lifestyle to everything that we're hearing coming at us from every direction. He has called us. He has ordained us unto peace. 2 Timothy 2, 4. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Being surrounded by talk radio <laughs> and everybody's got an opinion everywhere we go, we are compelled and coerced to enter into the debate, into the conversation. Here, we're told, no. The Amplified Version. No soldier, <coughs> excuse me, no soldier in active service gets entangled in the ordinary business affairs of civilian life. He avoids them so that he may please the one who enlisted him to serve. You are not your own, the scripture says. You've been bought with a price. We belong to him. <clears throat> we are his disciples. We are to be as he is, do as he did, walk as he walked, learn him. That's being enlisted in his service to please him. It's not about us. It's all about him. It's not about the United States of America. It's not about the conditions of society. It's about him. What pleases him? What does he expect from us? These are challenging elements of this subject. The second thing that I would list as to how we prepare ourselves would be to watch and pray to be found worthy to escape. I quoted that to you a while ago. Luke 21, verse 36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be found worthy to escape all these things. Now, in other versions of Scripture, it doesn't say that. It doesn't quote Jesus that way. In some of the more modern versions, they declare that we're to pray always so that we may have the strength to go through and to endure. And I just, I'm not a scholar in these things. I just quote scripture. It's the King James Version and the New King James Version that puts it in these terms, that you may be found worthy to escape. God is the judge in this particular case. He is the judge. He's watching us. He's determining if we are worthy to escape what's coming. It's not necessarily a rapture verse. God knows how to protect us, hide us, cover us without the need for a rapture. And I'm, again, I'm not coming against the, the doctrine. I'm just addressing this at face value that you may be found worthy to escape. Proverbs 21.18 The wicked is a ransom 
for the righteous. And the treacherous is in the place of the upright. I have a teaching. I've already given it in this series of broadcasts on this channel. Ransomed Lives. Go back and find it. And I address this particular issue. The wicked is a ransom for the righteous. My life is spared at the expense of someone who does not know God and who God knows will never be redeemed. Only God knows these things. We don't. God is the righteous, right judge in all matters. Those are some pretty awesome promises. Isaiah 43, verse 1. Since, this is the Lord speaking. Since you are precious in my sight, since you are honored and I love you, I will give other men's lives in place of your own and other people's in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. Part of our preparing for his return is settling our spirit into these promises, these assurances. Not being affected, impacted, wavered by the things that come against us. This is peace. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. This is liberty. Removing from yourself all anxiety, all attachments of anxiety, just like Jesus did. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame. He found his peace even while he was being tormented. And the Bible says he left us an example in this way. Wow. Wow. I'm talking about real heavy discipleship. The third way that we can prepare ourselves for his coming and in these last days is to know our God and be as he is. Daniel 11.32, we're familiar with that. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, the Lord will corrupt, uh, the, the Antichrist will corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and rise up and do great exploits, even in the midst of global corruption and evil. The people who know their God will be strong. This is the level of confidence I'm talking about. You can only be strong where you do not fear. You can only be strong where you do not fear. John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say unto you, Jesus said, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and even greater works than these will he do, because I must go to the Father. So the great exploits that, that we as believers as soldiers under his command, we will do the same things he did and then some. Plenty of examples in scripture that we can follow, that we can learn, that we can tap into, that we can absorb into our imaginations and into our learning process. 1 John 4, 17 as he is, so are we. 1 John 2, verses 5 through 6. Whoever claims to abide in him must walk even as he walked. So it requires that we learn him. We learn his process of living in a day that was the worst, most diabolical empire that the world had ever known to that time. And even to this day, elements of it still exist. It set forth the system by which all of history would learn how governments ruled their people. 
So it still continues to this day. Wow. It's just amazing. Amazing. Another key element in our preparing ourselves to, for his return. Watch, stay on the alert, but do not fear. Mark 13, verses 32 and 33. But as for that day and hour, no one knows, but even the, not even the angels in heaven, not even the Son, but only the Father. He, uh, be on your guard and stay alert. Be on your guard and stay alert. For you do not know when the appointed time will come. That's what I do in this ministry. I make it my business, my ministry, to stay on the alert, to know the times that we're living in, so that I may purify myself and in hopes share that with my audience, be it on YouTube or in church or whatever, wherever, even my family. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on the alert. This is 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on the alert. Stand firm in your faith. Act like men. Be strong. Wow. Talking about a direct command. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on the alert. Stand firm in your faith. Act like men and be strong. In Second um, Peter chapter 1, there's the suggestion that we add to our faith virtue and to our virtue knowledge. And I did some research into the word virtue one time to get a better understanding of what was being implied in that particular scripture. In English, it's seen as a feminine word, virtue, virtuous, virgin. But in the original Greek, it takes on a more masculine perspective. And when you look it up and you review it and study it, you discover that, in essence, it says, add to your faith maleness, the strength of the male, just as we just read in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13, the strength of the male. Now, we know that the Bible is not written to men only. Anybody can read it, male and female. So what's this passage saying to the female? Add to your faith the strength of the male. Do not waver. Do not be overly overtly emotional or passionate in your faith. Guide and guard your faith in wisdom and knowledge so that you may know what you're saying and what you're talking about so that you may more effectively feed those who are listening to you, that you're ministering to. Add to your faith the strength of the male. This is very important to God or it wouldn't be in his word. And there's a lot to be said about this type of firmness in your faith. Why? Because the enemy knows our weaknesses in the flesh. And he plays that against the strength of the spirit. And he uses the weaknesses that we have in our emotions, our soul, to undermine and to diminish the strength of our faith. Be strong. Stay well fed and well prayed up <clears throat> in the growth of your faith. Mark 13, 33, take heed. Keep on the alert. Here we have that warning again. For you do not know when the appointed time will come. Now, what's this appointed time? It can be the return of Jesus, or it can be your death. If you're a believer, absent from the body, present with the Lord. The coming of the Lord can be on one of two, two scales. 
splitting the sky or sending you through the sky <clears throat> into your eternal home. You do not know where the, when the coming of the Lord is. You do not have the guarantee of the next second. You stay prepared for his appearing in one fashion or another. 1 Peter 1, seven. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. I hope you're hearing these words. How do you get strong in prayer so that it's effective? You have sound judgment and sober spirit so that you may be an effective warrior in your prayer closet. Isaiah 41, 9 through 10. You are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Be brave, be bold, be strong. Because the devil knows how to break us down. If we are weak in any area, <clears throat> we are susceptible, we are vulnerable to where he takes us from there. Be strong. I've got testimonies I've already shared again in this channel. But in all these cases where my life was being threatened, I couldn't afford to have weak ankles in my faith. And I'm not setting myself up as an example, but I do use as an example the human Paul, of Tar uh, Paul the Apostle. Follow me as I follow Christ. Now, that's either braggadocious or it's right on. The scriptures declare that you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. That's solidarity right there. You follow me as I follow Christ, Paul said. Notice he didn't quote scripture when he said that. <laughs> he spoke a word motivated by the Holy Spirit that became scripture. Look for those who are strong around you in faith. Learn from them. You're not become disciples of theirs. You are learning from them so that you may follow in their steps. That's what a disciple does. Follow me as I follow Christ. For the sake of being strong in prayer and in warfare against the enemy. John 14, 27. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Or dismayed. Dismayed. That means don't be shocked by whatever it is that you see, whatever is coming, whatever happens. Be unshockable. I've said this in times past. Probably the most powerful weapon or the most powerful tool that we know on earth in immediacy is the light switch. Not a bomb or a gun, but the light switch. I've done this before. I've stood before congregations and audiences, and as I'm ministering, especially on the subject of faith, I will have prearranged to have somebody without cue turn off the lights and then see what happens. The shock factor catches people off guard and they react. <gasps> Some scream. <clears throat> but I've, one of my little axioms, your first reaction to any action becomes the law of that action. Darkness has no power. No power whatsoever. It only gains its power 
with the absence of light. All the power is in the light. No matter how bright the light is, darkness can't overcome whatever light there is. It gains <clears throat> whatever power it has in the reaction of people in fear. If you were to know this and walk in this, you'd be fearless. Because there's nothing that can cause your heart to be dismayed, to be shocked. This is the solidarity. This is the way Jesus walked. This was the model that he was. And this is the model that we are to study and to meditate upon. Like a cow chewing his cud. We're to feed on the, the nature and the personality and the strength of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the life that we live in this flesh is not of our faith, but the faith of Christ that indwells us. He's the one we're to be like. And the more like him we become, the less arsenal the enemy has to use against us. And the more powerful we are, being children of light, against the darkness that has no truth in it. This is how we prepare for the coming of our Lord. Because the days ahead are extremely challenging, and every prophet told us that. And now we're there. So I pray that you are not only encouraged, but that you're enlightened by what we're trying to share here. And that from this will come a stronger breed of warrior, believer, and disciple in Jesus Christ. Woe unto you, inhabitants of the earth, Jesus said, for the devil has come down unto you full of wrath. And that's the time that we're living in now. We're going to see many extremes that we've never experienced ever before, both in this generation and generations past, because this is the time. I praise God. I thank you for being with us <clears throat> and staying with us, and I promise that we'll have more coming up. So stay tuned, and we'll see you again very soon. I'm Wally Wood. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forms in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valdez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvalidez.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time, and be sure to like and share this channel.